Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17 beta 8. This is out to developers and iOS 17 public beta 6 should be out by the time you're watching this video as well or tomorrow at the latest. Usually they release it the same day, but let me know if you're seeing it in the comments below. Along with this, Apple also released watchOS 10 beta 8, iPadOS 17 beta 8, tvOS and HomePod OS 17 beta 8, and then also AirPods firmware 6 beta 4, along with Vision OS 1.0 beta 3. We did not get a Mac OS 14 Sonoma update as the next beta seems to be on a bi-weekly basis at this point. So that one probably won't release when iOS 17 does. Now, before we talk about the size, build number and new features, I wanted to mention the Apple event that Apple announced today. They actually sent out invites. You can see that here. And if we go to Twitter, you can see the actual invite that people received that says Wonderlust. And then it says it takes place on September 12th, 2023 at 10 a.m. Pacific time or 1 p.m. Eastern. You can see this on apple.com. It has an animated GIF or GIF here with the Apple with maybe some new colors about the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max or iPhone 15 Ultra. Of course, we also expect iPhone 15 and 15 Plus, and you'll be able to watch this here on apple.com, YouTube, and other places. If you want an in-depth video of everything to expect with this event, let me know in the comments below. Now, this particular update came in at 550.7 megabytes. That's on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. It was between 500 and 600 megabytes on all the devices here. So it's definitely smaller than it was before. Let's take a look at the build number. We'll go to settings, then general, then about, and you can see the build number is 21A5326A. We again have an A at the end, as we expect, as this is not the release candidate version. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. As far as the modem goes, we have the exact same modem version as we did with beta 7. 2.08.02, this can vary depending on device you're using, but if you're actually on a 14 Pro or Pro Max, you should have the same version. It changes depending on your device. As far as what's new this time around, well, not a lot of huge changes, but there's a couple things I noticed. One of them, they seem to continue to update and sort of modify. If we go into state of mind in the app for health, go over to health here on the left, I have beta seven on the right. I have beta eight. If we select next, all of these colors seem to be the same, but again, they've changed the pace of the rings. So these have changed just like they did from beta six to beta seven. It's a slight difference, but it's there. So that's really the only change there that I can see. And also one nice feature we got with Apple maps may not be present in beta eight. If we go into maps within maps, if we route to an area that has low cell signal, we no longer have the option either in beta seven. So they may have removed this remotely where it would tell us that we should download the offline map. I've tried this a couple different ways and haven't been able to actually get it to show back up. So the offline map option, maybe that will show up again, but so far it seems to be removed. Now, also there's quite a few splash screens in this update and one is really nice. If we go back into photos here, I have a screenshot sent over by Cameron and Connor, and you can see here when they were connected to Bluetooth in a car, they weren't using CarPlay, but were connected to Bluetooth and playing music. It popped up automatically asking if they wanted to connect with someone else next to them and allow them to control Apple music from their device as well. This is a feature we've had with SharePlay with iOS 17 and the introduction of it, but now there's a little splash screen for it and it also shows on the lock screen also. So you can either tap to play there or tap to join or tap within the music app. I wasn't able to get this to show up playing CarPlay or anything else, but it seems like it works if it's nearby and the other person is also on iOS 17 beta eight. There's also a new splash screen for the TV app as well. And the TV app, thanks to Solomon for sending this one in, you'll see here it says watch Apple TV plus on your television. If you have a TV that actually has TV built in, Apple TV, it shows Samsung, Sony, Android TV, LG Smart TV, and TV 4K. So this didn't pop up for me, but I didn't have any of those TVs nearby. Also, there was an additional splash screen in music on my other device. So again, I took a screenshot of it and it says, welcome to Apple music and then hear about new music first. Now I have opened music on this, but for some reason it was showing that. So I went back in and it sort of did it all over again and showed that splash screen all over again by itself. So that's something that was a little bit odd. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention was an email that was sent out to developers. If we go into Twitter or X, you'll see Aaron P 613 actually posted the email and it says the Apple developer program license agreement has been revised to support upcoming features. And one of the things they mention is journaling suggestions API. Now we're waiting for the journaling app in iOS 17. This is coming later, probably with iOS 17.1 or maybe even iOS 17.2. 
but it looks like they're getting ready. So hopefully they'll include that with 17.1 and we'll finally get to be able to use the journaling app and use suggestions from different apps and much more. Now, as far as the release notes, if we go into feedback and within the feedback app, if we go to recent activity under iOS and iPad OS 17 beta eight, there's even more resolved and known issues. Now this time around, there's 11 categories of known issues, which is down from 12 categories in beta seven. The good news is we have 80 categories of resolved issues and that's up from 79 with beta seven. So lots of things they've actually resolved. You'll see airplay. The airplay picker list might not populate except for the current route. They've actually fixed this in beta eight. Again, airplay mirroring isn't currently available on iPad pro that's been resolved. Many things have been resolved. So lots of things they've fixed with beta eight, which hopefully means it's going to be much, much better. Everything from CarPlay, where it says following a short disconnection from CarPlay, it might present a blank map view while other information remains visible. This issue doesn't affect Apple maps and CarPlay dashboard. So lots of things throughout here, I would highly recommend taking a look at this if you're having some issues and also be sure to report feedback if you're not seeing it listed there. As far as remaining bugs, well, we don't know of any that have been specifically fixed in this update other than what they've listed here. I haven't heard from many of you. I haven't really experienced any since using this over the period of just an hour or so, but the notification bug definitely is still there again. You'll see it's still there. They haven't fixed it. Not sure why, but it's still there. So it must not be a priority. I'm sure they've seen this by now and others complain about it. So it's definitely something that they should take a look at. Now, as far as overall performance, performance has been pretty good. Most people have actually said beta eight was noticeably smoother than beta seven. So ProMotion ramps up nice and fast. When we're scrolling fast, you can see that it's very, very smooth going into apps like music. It seems to load nice and fast. Everything is really smooth. And the same is true on iPhone 11. So if we go in, we'll try again and let it connect this time since we're on Wi-Fi. And if we scroll down after it's loading, it's nice and fast. It's not jittery or anything like that. Now we don't have 120 Hertz display here, but everything seems to be pretty fast in general, just scrolling, going into different apps and much more. If we go in and maybe load Minecraft, as many of you have asked me to sort of revisit and do that again, almost dropped my iPhone there. Let's let this load and see what we've got as far as overall speed and frame rates. So it's loading. You'll see it says it's done. It was a little bit stuttery when it was loading. That's pretty typical. And maybe if we go up here, let's see how this goes. It's instantly fast and smooth. So that's good on an older phone. It's working pretty well. Maybe there's a little bit of lag there as I scroll back and forth, but that could just be the screen refresh rate as well. But in general, things seems to be, seem to be loading pretty quickly and it's not getting warm strangely. So my phone isn't warm at all. In fact, after I run benchmarks, it typically is quite warm. My 14 pro max wasn't warm at all. So that's actually a nice change, even though it needs to actually regulate thermals to process that information. It seems not to be as hot as it was before. Now, as far as battery life, that's yet to be seen. Of course, that takes a few days to know, but let's take a look. We'll go to battery, battery health and charging. I'm still at 89% battery health. Now, if we take a look at yesterday, yesterday, I had three hours and 49 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 26 minutes of screen idle time and used about 90% of my battery. I still haven't had great battery life with iOS 17. Hopefully this resolves it today. We're at three hours and 37 minutes and only at 50%. So it's much, much better already today, but we'll have to see what it's like after a few days. We'll check that later this weekend. Now, as far as if you should install iOS 17 beta eight, well, if you're on beta seven, of course you should. And of course, if you're on iOS 17 public betas, you should upgrade from public beta five to public beta six. That's typically what you should do. But if you're not using them yet and still wondering if you should try, I always caution to make sure you have a backup and a computer. If you really want to downgrade because without a computer, you won't be able to downgrade, but you will be able to upgrade to the final version once it's released to the public. So I've had some questions about that. But in general, at this point, we should be very close to a final release. So it should be plenty stable. If it's not, Apple is really needs to delay it. So at this point, I think it's plenty stable. It's been really good compared to iOS 16 betas, other than maybe battery life and a few things here and there with lockups and stuttering. But in general, it seems to be pretty good. As far as when to expect iOS 17 RC or release candidate, that's the final version that's released to developers and public beta testers before it's released to the public. That version will probably be out the day that we have the Apple event on the 12th. Typically that's what we see last year with iOS 16, we had the RC on September 7th, the year before that September 14th with iOS 15 RC. So we can expect something similar to that.
As far as this year though, we have that event on the 12th. Usually we have a big gap to use the update until that point. We could see an RC too, but we could have no updates until the 12th with the RC that day with a final release to the public on the 18th. That's typically what Apple does. And then with the iPhone 15, the pre-orders should go live on the 15th, typically with them releasing to the public on the 22nd. So it's going to be a very busy September. Of course, we'll have watch OS 10 and all of the other releases as well. As far as benchmarks, let's take a look. Like I said, it wasn't even warm when I ran this on the left here is beta seven on the right is beta eight. We have a little bit lower score for single core at 2,639 compared to 2,641. However, with multi-core it's much higher at 6,622 compared to 6,398. So in general, they're super close, but overall it's doing really well. It's higher for most people that have tested it. That's a good sign as we get closer to the final version. It's still not warm at all, even after he having the screen on this entire time. So that's everything in iOS 17 beta eight. Now, if I find anything else, of course, I'll have it in the follow-up video this weekend, where we talk about battery life features and much more. Of course, I'm looking forward to that Apple event on the 12th with the iPhone 15. And if you're planning to pick one up, let me know what version you're trying to get. Maybe the 15 pro pro max or ultra, whatever they call it. Now, of course, iOS 17 is only a couple weeks away. We do expect one more update before the final release, maybe two, but that's pretty rare. But let me know your experience about it in the comments below and what you're looking most forward to. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.